Greetings everybody, Irish Trekkie, back with another Star Trek Discovery, the official Starships collection from Eagle Moss. Welcome to the USS Edison. Um, I've been looking forward to this for a while. I've probably mentioned it a few times and I know I've talked to my pal Chris the Trek Collector about uh, the Edison as well. Um, I've always had a kind of curious soft spot for this ship, but we finally have it here and um, I'm testing out a new kind of recording location. Let me know what you think of it and um, maybe, I, I don't know if I'll scrap this and go back to the drawing boards again, but uh, you never know, it might be a big success. So we have a nice box, not too massive. So let's open her up. And that tells us that we have our lovely magazine there, number 15. And again, free next day deliveries and orders over 50 pounds. So do check out shop.eaglemoss.com. This is not a paid sponsorship. Um, I just generally like the guys over there, the guys and gals. And uh, yeah, so if you like what you see, you can buy them a la carte or subscribe. So we'll put the magazine to one side and uh, let's see what kind of ship that we have. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, so it's reasonable in size. Uh, number of the base is 2831A slash A USS Edison. We put that over here. Our mount, always oh, so chunky with the Discovery ships. And it's in one piece. So let's put that over here for a moment. I'm gonna put this box safe and secure over here. I've yet to display them properly because I'm kind of running out of room here. So, the Edison Ahoy. Um, all saucer, <laughs> to be honest with you. But there's a lot going on on the ventral side of the ship. But um, yeah, might as well just show it to you. There we go. For people who are unfamiliar with the Edison, here she is in all her glory. It's nice. I do like her, to be honest with you. Um, so chunky, chunky saucer section. Windows, just around the periphery there, we have kind of, well, there's a bit of yellow there, so some uh, RCS maneuvering thrusters. Bridge section, USS Edison NCC 1683. We have decals, some nice sculpt going on here. Uh, bridge module going back down into the spine of the ship. Um, some nice kind of raised architecture coming back here. And uh, some little extra detailing there. Uh, the windows are sculpted, but again misaligned, manufacture and drift. We've come to expect that. Some slight Aztec on the hull as well, as you can see, which is, you know, pretty nice. Um, the Discovery ships, I think the Aztec has been quite nice on them. And, you know, based on the previous ships that we've gotten, we've had the Corala, we've had a number of uh, Federation ships along with the Klingon ships. But um, the paint applications have been quite decent on them. See a little bit of a different patterning coming down here. Some more RCS units. Just the aft of the saucer section. Quite an abrupt finish there. And again, down on the ventral side. Let's have a look at the saucer section for a second. More paint apps here. Decals. Kind of like the old school. Remember the first version of the Discovery in the trailer? It's almost kind of like that, which kind of took from... Not that it took from, but there was elements from the Franklin uh, that we could see in there as well. You have your windows. They kind of are inset a little bit here, similar to what you would find on Voyager and stuff like that, which is kind of cool. Some nice detailing just along this side as well. Discovery, kind of drive section. A bit shorter. Deflector dish. Nice purple inset there, actually. That's going right through behind the dish as well, which is quite nice. And then you have your nacelles, yellow bizarre collectors here as well. So as you can see, just on the inside, you have your neck, pretty strong neck. Quite wide at the aft here. We'll have a look at the designing of the ship in the magazine a little bit later on. Uh, shuttle bay, as far as I remember. Impulse. Nice yellow. It is painted. No, it's plastic. 
actually plastic. The buzzards and the, the other parts of the nacelles are painted in. Nice, wa nice warp nacelle actually, isn't it? Kind of on its side a little bit. Kind of like, um, like a Norway class or, you know, some of the other uh, first contact ships as well. So you have like the Norway, um, the Akira, the uh, Steamrunner, you know, the Jaeger as well. Um, so it's kind of just a, just a nice little different design. You could see that kind of being the other way as well. I think I saw a concept art of the neck going backwards as well. Um, but it's all about like this, this, but this ship kind of makes sense. It's odd, but it does kind of make sense to me that, you know, there's so much, I, I don't know what the role of this will be, but there's so much kind of, um, habitable space, you know, for, you know, scientific, exp I suppose exploration a little bit as well. Diplomatic, maybe. Um, small parts of it for the drive section as well. So maybe not the most powerful ship. Uh, maybe kind of concentrating on getting from A to B rather than maybe defensive. But it was brought in on, you know, the Battle of the Binary. So it does have some offensive capabilities in there. Nice detailing on... It's going to get in focus here now. Nice detailing on the bizarre collectors there as well. Kind of... It, it's it's going back to that kind of design ethos of um, the Federation trialing kind of different technologies you know not being capped like we see them in tng and stuff kind of more exposed different kind of configurations a lot more detailing on these uh nacelles as well um i like the kind of solid kind of the, the solidness of the ship though it's pretty cool i do like it I'm curious to know what you folks think of it is it too much of a departure um were you curious after when you saw it at the Battle of the Binary? I knew there was more to this model. I'm glad I got my hands on it. I still, looking at it now, I still do like it. Um, I dig the purple though. That's really cool. I, I like the colour purple. <laughs> the purple with the yellow is actually quite nice. And I like this kind of inset side of it here, which you can see that I'm pointing to. Uh, there we go. You can kind of see that inset in there. So that's actually pretty nice. And I do like the detailing on the ventral side of the defector dish as well. Um, some nice kind of architecture. The sculpt overall is very nice. The uh, Aztec pattern is carried through on the pylons, on the nacelles, on the ventral side of the saucer section. Um, I'm, I'm assuming, I'm pretty sure that this is the shuttle bay. And again, kind of like that open plan discovery shuttle bay as well. Window alignment is a little bit off. Nothing too crazy. Uh, let's see what she's like on the stand. And uh, we'll get a glimpse of her uh, goodies in the magazine as well. So stay tuned for that. So here she is on her stand. Sits very well, very strong. Not much given it. And um, has a nice little bit of a rake in it. So kind of shows off some of the nice detail on the ventral section, depending on where you have it. Um, the stand sits quite high, so as you can see, it's lifted off the base quite a lot there. Now, I'm shooting this from underneath, but um, you'll get a kind of good sense of um, how high she sits when you have it uh, in your position. But um, I do like it, I must admit. I'm curious to know what you folks think of this. I'm going to put it in kind of politely in there, quirky design, but I do, uh, I do, I do like a lot of elements on it, and I celebrate its kind of uh, uniqueness it's, it's quite hard to kind of stand out a little bit and uh, sometimes that can backfire on you but uh, I'm sure it was an interesting design process and uh, yeah the ships have a bit of a history behind them in discovery so uh, I'm glad to kind of have this in the collection and uh, like to see the lore continue to be built around the ship and um, yeah so that kind of wraps up the model review so let's see the design process and what other bits of information um, we'll find in the uh, magazine, shall we? Okay, so here we have our magazine. Issue number 15, USS Edison, NCC 1683, class Hoover, launch 23rd century, length 356.31 meters. Very, very precise. So, uh, nice graphic on the front. You can see how pronounced the D, the... As teching is here, um, nice pattern over the bridge, which we saw in the model as well. So um, yeah, let's see what kind of goodies lay inside, shall we? 
two sections profile of the US citizen mounting instructions which we saw earlier in the video um, you have your fore and aft of the nacelles you can see the kind of purple isn't here on these renders but I do like it on the actual physical model interesting profile and uh, again no additional information on the inside cover than we have on the outside so the USS Edison met its end after answering a distress call from the USS Shenzhou battle off the binary as we already discussed so very little is known of the history of the Edison and its crew uh, it was several it was one of several vessels that responded to the USS Shenzhou following the encounter with the gathering of Klingon ships led by the warrior Tukuvma so um, all going back to season one of Discovery um, so again when you compare this to the practical model that we have you can kind of get hints of the purple here it's a lot bolder on the practical model uh, the twin um, the twin, what are they? What are those things that protrude from the the LMB, like the, the arm on the dish itself? I can't really remember. But again, two pronged um, dish there, potentially some kind of photon uh, torpedo launchers on the front of that. Um, yeah, but again, it's all about the saucer section when it comes to the ship here. We had our RCS models uh, represented in the practical model as well, some nice detailing. Much bolder as teching on the digital versus the um practical model and you can see where the bridge uh window is on this one as well to kind of give you a sense of scale small but um pretty, pretty decent looking ship to be honest with you so designing the edison telegraph <laughs> i like that telegraph class ship um i like the lighting effect on this as well so the Edison was always intended to be a background ship as John Eves was working on a design uh, for the major ships in Star Trek uh, Discovery Season 1. He would break off for an hour or so every day to explore shapes for fleet ships every day for five weeks or so. He would produce four or five. So five weeks every day, four or five sketches. And again, um, that would jump back and forth with the uh, producers and stuff like that. So pretty decent. Uh, here we have I, J, K, and L. So you can see backward. I remember I, I, I was kind of pretty sure I talked about it when I was handling the model. I remember seeing uh, ones with the, the forward and back ones, I think, somewhere. But uh, there we go. Do you know, I kind of, I, I like it kind of back there. Um, so the Edison made his first appearance. The batch of sketches along the ship uh, with Vulcan inspired. So you have your ring there in the J. A little bit more fleshed out version here as well. So, um, as you remember, some of the elements of the drawings, especially the shape of the nacelles, were tied to the look of the discovery um, at the time, which were constantly changing. Um, the catamaran shape of the nacelles uh, supported with structure inspired the way they worked. The Shenzhou. Okay, yeah, that's pretty cool. You can see kind of 3D renders off it as well. Um, so, you can kind of see it looks kind of discovery-esque a little bit here as well it's, it's just quite a unique profile though like it does stand out you know for a background ship it's quite well it's not ne necessary but um it can be quite difficult for it to stand out um here we have some um higher kind of quality renders as well so that they look pretty decent uss malakowski so as usual ease added uh, details when he painted over the cg models um, in this case, he decided to uh, that the raised section at the back of the saucer would be where the shuttle bays are. So potential shuttle drawers, doors coming in here, which is actually quite cool. You can see a shuttle bay back on this render here as well. Some substantial sized input sections. And here we have the purple that we saw on the practical model as well. Nice lighting uh, development there as well. Nav lights on the port and starboard nacelles and saucer section as well. Are we docking ports along that side too? NCC 1474. So again, goes through revisions as it's going through the, the pipeline of design. And then again, that's pretty much what we saw over there just with the reworked um, registry on it as well. So pretty decent. So the USS Edison NCC 1683 Hoover class starship, ship named after the American inventor Thomas Edison. A class of ship named after test uh, and air show pilot Bob Hoover. So that's pretty cool. Malakowski, Malakowski, that is the... Um, 
Thunderbirds, wasn't it? Uh, the lady from the Thunderbirds. Uh, here we go. We named the design the USS Malachowski after Nicole Malachowski, who was the first lady Thunderbird pilot. Because of her, we label the, the Thunderbird class, which would have been an equally noble name for the ship as well. So that concludes our issue number 15. Issue 16, we have Baron Grimes' uh, festoon. So that was... Um, Oh, uh, Harry Mudd's father-in-law, basically. I'm curious to get my hands on that. I know it's been out for a while on the online store, but listen, subscribers and all that jazz. Issue 15, thanks for stopping by. Um, let me know in the comments below what you thought of the ship. And uh, if you're new to the channel and uh, you want to check out more reviews, do subscribe and check out the playlists because there's plenty of Star Trek Discovery TNG, Origin Series, Deep Space Nine, Voyager, Enterprise, concept reviews all over the place. So check out those playlists. And uh, don't forget to like and share with maybe like-minded friends. Maybe they don't know about these ships. So uh, sharing is caring and all that jazz. Big shout out also, if I can speak correctly, to my Patreon supporters as well. Uh, you're helping continue developing the channel as well. And um, I'm kind of pumping... Um, that support into other um, YouTube related projects and hopefully I'll get to meet some of you over in Destination Star Trek in Birmingham as well working on those details so as always thank you very much I've been your local Irish Trekkie and I will see you in the next video so take it easy and goodbye